This Airbnb makes over 11K a month on autopilot and I don't even own it. Come check it out. Hey everyone, my name is Jorge Contreras and I've been an Airbnb entrepreneur since 2017, over five years now, and I have grown my portfolio to over six figures a month and it's completely on autopilot. And today I am filming a three-part series on how this sublease right here, a property that I do not own, makes over 11K a month. The first thing I wanna talk about is how I actually found the property. So one of the most popular websites out there is Zillow.com. I went in there, I was looking for a three bedroom, two bath, single family home with a minimum of 1,100 square feet or more. Why you might ask, because that actually allows me to maximize the occupancy, which means I can charge more per night and ultimately have a higher revenue, a higher occupancy, and ultimately a higher profit. I called the owner as the phone number was listed uh, on the property, and he had mentioned to me that he actually already had an applicant that they had uh, accepted, and they were gonna move forward with the lease. But I decided to follow up about a week later just to check in on the status, because you know, when people are renting properties, they file out of the app process, just like people file out of escrow when they're buying properties. So I was living in possibility, called the landlord, and he said, you know what? They actually just fell out of the app. So he said, why don't you come check the property? I came, I looked at it, which I'm gonna give you guys a tour in part two, but it was perfect, guys. This property was exactly what we were looking for. It's new construction, so that means we were gonna have basically zero or very little deferred maintenance as time went on. The property is uh, four bedrooms, three and a half baths, 1,800 square feet, and it it's got plenty of parking as well, and it also has a garage, which we also turned into a game room to be able to create a staycation experience. The rent on this property is a 4,000 a month. So when we acquired it, the agreement was 4,000 for the first month and then 4,000 for the deposit. It did come with some appliances, mainly the refrigerator and the stove, everything else like furniture, supplies, appliances, all the smaller appliances, decor and photography was obviously part of our upfront capital to be able to get this property up and running. There were three objections that I needed to overcome when providing a solution to be able to rent this property with the owner. And I hope you guys are taking notes because one, note takers are money makers, but two, these are the top three objections that you're gonna get when speaking to a landlord or a property management company when it comes to renting their property and using it as a short-term rental. And number one, they wanted reassurance that I was gonna be able to pay the rent regardless of how well or how not well we did with our Airbnb business. So in the lease agreement, we wrote that we were gonna set up the property on auto pay two days early. So no matter what, they would get their money every single month on time. The second objection that they had is, hey, what about any repairs? Like what if somebody damages inside or makes a hole in the wall or what if they mess up the floor? And so in the lease agreement, we also wrote that any incidents, any damages that were directly caused by my guest, I would be responsible for. And the reason I feel comfortable doing that is because in the Airbnb, you know, as a company, Airbnb provides a $1 million host guarantee policy where they can actually, you know, protect you in the event of any of these incidents. But even before that kicks in, just like when somebody stays at a hotel, uh, they collect, you know, when you stay at a hotel, they collect your credit card. And if there's any incidentals, they will charge a credit card work. Well, Airbnb does the exact same thing. And we have the ability to charge the guest's credit card up until 14 days after they check out. So I feel comfortable putting that in writing to give them peace of mind. The third objection that they had is, hey, you, you know, we used to live in this property and we wanna make sure that the neighbors are taken care of. We don't want them to feel uncomfortable. We don't wanna have parties or events or anything that's gonna you know, just disrupt and take away from their everyday you know, life. And so we also put in writing that we will make sure to introduce ourselves to the neighbors, everybody you know, on the left, on the right, in front and behind us, because those are the people closest to the property, and make sure we personally introduce ourselves to them, tell them that we're gonna be running a short-term rental business. However, there's no parties, no events, we have quiet hours, cameras, noise sensors, everything to be able to run a tight ship. We exchanged info with all of the neighbors, they were like, hey, okay, you know, it sounds good. A few of them were kind of like, ah, well, let's see how this goes. But you know, after a couple months, you know, with the system that we have in place, you know, to be able to avoid, you know, bad guests. Um, everybody's been uh, really happy. Now it's been over three years. And the only reason I came to the property today was to actually shoot this three-part video series. 
One of the things that I love about this property is the location. We are right next to downtown Los Angeles. And if you guys are familiar with downtown LA, right, you got the convention center, the Staples Center, which is now crypto.com. So there's always conferences, events, weddings, all kinds of events. And so having this Airbnb right next to the downtown it allows us to have basically a high occupancy year round. And so we have about an 83% occupancy. When we first started leasing the property, we did a 12 month lease with the option to renew. And again, that was towards the end of 2017. It's been about three years and we've been continuing to renew the lease. And we've been able to create a very strong relationship with the owner and he's even referred some other properties to us as well. The other thing that I really like about the property is that in the front, there's a lot of parking for you can park actually up to four vehicles. And that's always really important because some really busy area, especially when you're near the beach or a downtown and many popular areas of the US parking is always an issue. So make sure you get a property that has parking for a minimum of two vehicles. There are typically five things that I look for in a property to be able to sublease it. Number one, it must be a three bedroom, two bath, 1100 square feet or more, because again, that allows me to be able to host eight to 12 people in the property, allowing me to maximize my cash flow. And this property obviously meets that criteria. The second one is that it must have AC and heat. Number three, the property must be renovated. This property is actually brand new construction. So that was a huge plus because one of the challenges that you'll experience when you rent a property, if it's not fully renovated and there's a lot of wear and tear, that's only gonna get worse over time, especially as the years go by and eventually people will start to complain and maybe even ask for partial refunds. Because think about it, we got this property three, almost three years ago and when we took the pictures, it was brand new construction. I'm here almost three years later to film content. And I'm like, man, we need to, we need to paint this place, right? We need to make some upgrades. And so the pictures don't reflect what it looks like today. And that's one of the most important things. It's actually one of the six categories in which somebody leaves you a review. It's the accuracy, right? So, Hey, um, how was the experience relevant to the pictures? Like, was it accurate? What were the pictures and the description exactly what the experience that you had. And if it wasn't, then obviously that can impact the overall review. And so it's very important to have the property fully renovated whenever you take over a lease. And number five, which is really more of a bonus is appliances, which again, this property did have a refrigerator and her stove, which kept, you know, a couple thousand dollars in her pocket, but everything else we had to uh, make that investment upfront. And that's it for this video guys for part one of Three, make sure you guys watch video number two and number three, where I'm gonna be walking you through the property, going over the strategies, and also talking about the numbers and what our monthly profit actually is. With that being said, guys, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and make sure you guys like this video and comment with any questions down below. See you on the next one.